Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me for a special DCTV 23 show. Every now and then, we here at DCTV 23 are going to take time to check in with members of our Douglas County community to see how things are going in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. Joining me today is the Executive Director of the Cultural Arts Council of Douglasville, Douglas County, Ms. Emily Leitner. Ms. Leitner, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me today. How has the Cultural Arts Council of Douglasville, Douglas County adapted during this unprecedented time? Well, you know, honestly, it's a struggle. We are trying to find different ways to get um, the arts out into the community. We Everything started during our Youth Art Month, which was in partnership with the Douglas County School System. So a lot of the parents didn't can't get it, didn't get a chance to see all of their kids' artwork. So what we did is we took all of that and made it virtual, so they could log on to our social media pages and they could take a virtual tour, so they could still get a chance to see this. We ended up doing this for every exhibit, all the way until June, and then we did interviews with each artist um, with our Douglas County Art Guild, giving them an opportunity to get their information out there. You get to learn about the artist. But you have to remember, it's a hard time for artists as well, because nonprofits are one of the first things to get cut during this unprecedented time. And on top of that, arts is. So artists, where this is their sole source of income, are struggling. They're struggling to get commissions, to get their art out there. So our goal has been to be able to help them during this time period. So we've been sharing all of this information, and we want to get art into the homes. Um, during, while school was still in session, we ended up creating a Create Outside the Lines Facebook page to allow for parents, teachers, community to go to this page, share words of encouragement. But we also shared things like uh, our activities for all ages. We included things, um, different activities, art lessons. Um, to give parents a place to go to still include art in their home. Um, and then we added free craft bags. So the community was able to come to the art center with safely social distancing and being able to pick up a free craft bag um, and take it home and use those materials with their family to make things. So, so it was a lot of fun um, and making things just as virtual as possible, taking our family arts ventures program that we do for the community and the school and turn it into virtual performances so they can view it from the comfort of their own home. Wow. You know, you mentioned, you know, being a nonprofit, which the CAC is, mm -hmm. uh, it takes donations. And right now that, you know, opportunity, I'm sure is really challenging. But as a nonprofit, can you speak to how it's impacted your organization? Absolutely. It has been, um, like I said, a struggle, you know, with arts and nonprofits being cut first. We've had a cut in funding. Um, we had to cancel our fiscal year Taste of Douglasville event. And honestly, I'm not sure what um, our event will look like for October, if that's going to be possible or not. And as a nonprofit, we depend on those fundraisers. We have three fundraisers that we do throughout the year. The Taste of Douglasville, which is always um, a lot of fun for our community. Our chili cook-off. Um, which happens in downtown Douglasville, and then our annual gala in November. Um, without these fundraisers, we wouldn't do, be able to do everything that we do. Um, and so it's made a large impact um, for our organization having to cancel. As much as we are trying to push everything virtual, um, we're having cuts in fundings. Um, we've been able to um, write some grants, and we've received quite a few now to help with that but it still does not make up for the lack of funding from the fundraisers and other additional support that we normally get. Tell me more about what is new in the CSE's public art initiatives. Yeah, so we have a lot of great things going on in our public art initiative. And that's one thing that was important to us um, as an arts council is to be able to be there for our artists. So we, in partnership with the WSA and the fire department, we opened up a second stint of our fire hydrants. Many uh, of the community members may remember our first stint from the Cultural Arts Council to downtown Douglasville. We painted the hydrants and we had a lot of success and positive feedback. So we decided to do a second stint that would go all the way from 
to O'Neill Plaza and wrap around past the high school and back to the Cultural Arts Center. So it makes a complete circle now. Um, and we paid artists to be able to do this. So even though it's not a lot of money, it's still a little bit going towards artists during this time period. And of course, our major project that we are just fortunate to have is our Art Pop APL. And we partnershiped with a nonprofit called Art Pop Street Gallery. And the Douglas County Tourism Department assisted us in this program. And what it is, is we juried in 30 artists from across the state of Georgia into this program called Art Pop ATL. This Art Pop program is across the country. So it's in Las Vegas, the Carolinas, California, New York, but it was not in Georgia. And so the Cultural Arts Council had the pleasure of bringing this program to the state of Georgia. And we are setting a standard here in Georgia for the arts. And we juried in 30 artists, and now their artwork is blown up on billboards across the state and the Hartsville Airport on uh, Metro Atlanta buses, bus stations, um, and Centennial Park, next to Hard Rock Cafe, and their website is on there. And I've already done follow-up interviews with a lot of the artists saying that they can't keep up with the demand of the commissions they are receiving from this. Mm -hmm. So we're again supporting our artists. Um, it was no cost to them to be able to do this. And um, it's been a pleasure to meet new artists and get them out in front of the community when they're struggling. Um, and it's been an awesome program that we've been able to do. And we're also put, putting Douglas County on the map for initiating this in Georgia when no one else had, had done this before and bringing so much recognition, not only to the Cultural Arts Council, but Douglas County as well. Awesome. And that goes right in line with the mission of my department, the Communications and Community Relations Department, because what you are doing with the CAC is raising Douglas County, raising the profile of Douglas County in a positive way. Wow, thank you, job well done. Now, in light of the coronavirus pandemic, the future often is up and down and we don't know what will be open, what will be closed and what is really happening. What can you tell us as of now or today that you have coming up? Well, like you said, we don't know what's coming up and we are taking everything day by day. Um, as a fundraiser, we created a tiny fundraiser and it is tiny six by six canvases that we have filled our community room with. And artists throughout the county um, and state have donated little canvases that we gave to them for free, they painted them and returned them, and we're selling them for $20 each to help raise funds for the Cultural Arts Council. Um, so with that, every Thursday, we are currently open until 7 p.m. We'll have demos, activities, um, we'll have music and food, um, and each night is themed and hosted by one of our satellite organizations. These satellite organizations um, are a part of the Cultural Arts Council, but they are all different. So we have things from CAST, which is the Community Alliance Stage and Theater. We have our Art Guild, Sweetwater Camera Club, and they all host a reception. So like one night will be an ice cream party, hoping that they'll also, when they come by to enjoy a good time, they will also purchase some tiny canvases. And again, we're doing this all by safely social distancing. We require temperature checks at the door um, and sanitizer throughout everything, making sure that people are also safe at the same time. Wow, that's great. Last but not least, I really want to ask you, what can the community do to support the CAC during this time? That's a great question because there's a lot going on right now and it's different for everybody. Right now, we would love for our community to become a member of the Cultural Arts Council. Um, just a simple membership helps and support us. Um, and it's only $30 for a family membership. And that lasts for the whole year. And so just a simple $30 makes a difference to us. And with that membership, the community gets discounts on um, events, art camps, um, anything that we have going on, you'll get a discount for. And starting in August, running through the end of September, we will actually have a membership drive. So if you purchase a membership, you'll get entered automatically into a gift card basket drawing with over $100 worth in gift cards. Um, so it adds a little a special incentive to become a member of the Cultural Arts Council and you're uh, supporting the arts in our community. But other than that, you know, you can sign up for an art class, support our artists because they need it now more than ever. 
Um, we have safe, safely social distancing art classes. We're not allowing more than five people at a time in a class. They're all six feet apart, following CDC and state guidelines. Our shop, our exhibits, or our pop-up art shop, if you don't feel comfortable coming in to the Arts Council currently, we post all of this online so you can shop from the comfort of your own home through social media. And we share these things, how much they are. If you have questions, feel free to call us because we are happy to answer them. Awesome. On behalf of DCTV, DCTV 23 Station Manager, TJ Jaglinski, who's helping produce this, and Communications and Media Specialist, Lena Hardy, I'm Rick Martin. Thank you so much for joining me, Ms. Leitner. Thank you again. Thank you.